All right, champ. Okay, go lay down. Hey, it's the preacher, and today we're going to make some thick and chunky salsa. You know, it's summertime. Everything we're going to use today, I think except the garlic and some seasoning, came out of the garden. So, um, I, when you make garden salsa, a lot of times it's runny, and they, they typically call that restaurant style because it's it's fresh tomatoes, it's fresh peppers, it's fresh cilantro, fresh onions. That watery salsa is great to eat, but when you can it and then you you open that can up maybe six months down the road, it's winter time, you basically got some kind of weird tomato juice in there. And so what I want to do today is show you how to make some thick salsa. Not by adding tomato paste out of a can, but by just using the tomatoes in your garden and what you have on hand, you can, you can make a thick salsa that you can scoop with a chip that will stay on there and it will hold up through the canning process. Now anytime you can something it's going to alter the text, the, the texture of, of what you're canning because of the processing of it. But if you start out with a good thick salsa you will have a much thicker salsa when you open that up. So let me show you what we're going to be using today. I'll show you my process. It's very simple and um, Hopefully it'll help you maybe in the days ahead deal with some of the tomatoes that you're having to deal with and our favorite way to eat tomatoes is in salsa. Uh, if we're not slicing them and eating them fresh, uh, our favorite way to preserve them is through salsa. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, first thing we have here is a bunch of, these are indigo cherry tomatoes. They have the little indigo colored top on them. These are yellow pears. I'm going to spread those out on a bacon sheet. I've washed them off and strained them in the strainer and I've gone through and if I've seen any that had some blemishes or anything on them I've tried to pick them out. But I want to spread them out in a single layer and uh, what we're going to do is put these under the broiler and blister the tops of the skins and also get some of that water out of them and that will help us get a much thicker salsa. And I've found that the more of these smaller tomatoes I use like this, the thicker my salsa is. So I've got room for quite a bit more. I may put some bigger uh, tomatoes on here and uh, I'll bring you back when we're ready to get in the uh, broiler. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. There's all the, ch the uh, small cherry type tomatoes I showed you, you know, the indigo cherries and the uh, yellow pears. I added a couple cloves of garlic here. We're going to roast those. This is a Tibetan chili that I de-seeded, a jalapeno that I de-seeded, uh, an onion that I've sliced and added, and I kept a little onion over here on the side, and we'll set this aside. This will be the chunk that we add. We'll also add some chunky uh, bell peppers afterwards, but this is what I'm going to put under the broiler to roast. And roasting instructions, put your rack all the way to the top, put this on a flat pan, with some sides because you're going to start cooking juice out of this when you roast it. But primarily, you want everything in one layer so that it all gets blasted with heat evenly. And then every broiler is different. Sometimes you stick it in there and in a minute it's blackened. Sometimes you may have to go four or five minutes. These bigger tomatoes like this here with a lot of juice in them, these will take longer to blister. But the main thing is make sure they're skin side up as much as possible because that's what's going to char. You won't see much charring on the fruit, but you'll see it primarily on the skins. So uh, let's slide it in the broiler and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, here we are about three minutes in. You can see all the tomatoes are starting to break loose and there's a little bit of blistering on the peppers. And... All in all, I want more than that. That's not near enough to suit me. So we're going to put it back in for probably another two minutes and we'll check it again. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. I hope that don't fog over for you guys, but you can see some blackening on top of this. These peppers have clearly blackened up. There's some blackening on top of the garlic. I'm just going to bring my entire... Um, blender over here and I'll take what's blackened off there and I'll just scoop up. I know that tomato's black as it's going to get or black as I want it to get on top. There's those peppers. I'll grab these here. If I get a tomato or two it ain't going to hurt nothing. Now if I want to blacken up 
and darken up and blister the top of these, what I would do is just slide them more to the center. Okay, let's slide these back in there and put a little more color on them. There's what we end up with. Now look at the color on the top of those onions. See how blackened they are? The skin's blackened up on this. A lot of these have blackened. All the tomatoes have split open. Steam's been rendering, rendering off. I don't know how well you can see it, but over here in the far corner, there's quite a bit of juice collecting there. That's all juice that's not in our salsa. So that's why we're using this slotted spatch or a slotted, what do you call those? Flippers? <laughs> and there again, guys, you can let this go as, as long as you want. You can get it as black as you want, as charred as you want. The key to it is to get it up close to the broiler because you're not so much wanting to cook it as you are just to char the outside and get some of that moisture out. And if you put it lower in the oven, of course, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna blacken nearly as quick as if you put it right up under that broiler. A lot of moisture condensing there. Okay, how about that? There we go. Now to this, we're ready just to puree. So we're gonna add some things, and you can add whatever you like. One of the main ingredients you're gonna need is salt. There's a lot of tomatoes in there. I didn't measure this, I'm just adding to taste. <laughs> this is uh, taco seasoning. You can use whatever brand you prefer, and there again, it's to taste. I may go back and add more. This is Mexican lime seasoning from Schaefer Farms, and I find it adds a tangy lime taste that I don't get with anything else, and I like a little bit of lime in my uh, salsa. Now, I would add a ton of cilantro, but my wife is not a big cilantro fan. I mean, she likes it, but not to the degree that I like it. So I just ran out there and grabbed some cilantro, which it's hot summer and it ain't exactly thriving. So we've added that. Let's put it on the blender and let's give it a few pulses, get it liquefied and see, see what we need to add. Let's give it a few pulses. I'm just going for taste here. What do I think about it? It's definitely thick, as you can see. It's not watery running off my chip. It's stuck to it. Well, that's really good. Since I'm happy with the salt level and the seasoning level, let's add the remainder of our ingredients. You remember the uh, onion that I saved? Well, I diced it up, and it's down in here in the bottom. But I also took some of our uh, sweet peppers that we took out of the garden and froze. We chopped these up and just freeze them in a Ziploc bag, pull them out when we need them. We will add these to our salsa. And it won't take much, a few pulses to get them mixed through. Now, that's all we need. Let's pull that out and we'll give it a taste. I think you can kind of see how thick that is in the bowl. I like a scoop chip. So we scoop it up. Good, thick consistency. I mean, it's not a paste, but it's much like a store-bought salsa. If you like a thick and chunky salsa. Man, that is delicious. Okay, what kind of video would it be if I didn't reach over here and get a chip and show you what I think about it? Now, as you can see, the salsa is thick. It's chunky. It doesn't want to fall out of your chip. There's plenty still in there, even when I hold it up. Man. I can't. It's so simple. But when you roast it in the oven, not just roasting the peppers, but I mean, we're roasting the tomatoes. We're cooking that juice out of them. Then you throw in some chunky peppers, some chunky onions, give it a few pulses. That's wonderful. I, uh, 
you know, there's no recipe here. It's, it's to your taste. The key is roasting the peppers, roasting the onions, and roasting the tomatoes. Get some of that juice out. Then get a good mix on there and then add the chunky peppers and onions at the end just with a few pulses after everything else is thoroughly blended and seasoned to taste. I know what I'm going to be doing. I'll see you guys on the next video.